You sound good now. Okay. How's everybody? Great. Great. Hi, Sharon. Hi. So maybe I'll just give us a quick introduction. Welcome everybody. Um, as you know, this is um, the story of Nightingale. So we have a few um, illustrious Nightingale gardeners here. Um, some who have been there for decades and some who are, are newer. Um, and they're gonna tell us a little bit about their history with the garden and what it means to them and you know how the space has changed over time and what their hopes are for it and all of that. So. Elnor, are you ready to kick us off? You can introduce yourself, say how long you've been at the garden and tell us your story. Hi, everybody. Yes, um, I did some research. I couldn't get into the archives of the, the BPS because uh, the records are, are not online. They are all on paper, but I did a, whatever I could find on research. Nightingale Garden, uh, the school was closed in the 60s and the garden was started in the 1970s. And um, Boston Area Network took over in 1982, and then it was transitioned to the um, the trustees in 2011. So that's what I got on the history of the garden for so far. And tell them how long you've been there, Eleanor. Oh, I came to the garden in the late uh, eight in the 80s in the early in 1980s. So I've been there about maybe 30 years. And what was it Came like when you first- they had water. Yeah, tell us a little bit more about what it was like when you started. Um, when I started in the garden, it was just like um, a big open lot with lots of grass and weeds and wire and tires and lumber, it, it was a mess. And uh, we didn't even have water. So we, I had to w go out and buy um, a trash can to catch rainwater uh, to water my garden. Um, and we only, when I went there, we only had um, uh, 12 people. And then we went around the neighborhood and just kept uh, begging people and knocking on doors. And finally we got 40 people in the garden. So that's how I started there. And it was in, under the um, um, Dorchester Garden Land when we started. When I started there, it was under Dorchester Garden Land. And then Dorchester Garden Land, as you know, went into receivership. And um, we contacted um, Boston Areas Network uh, and they took over the garden for us. In 1982, Boston Area Network took over the uh, community gardens. And then uh, up until 2014, they were in charge. I'm sorry, 2011. What, um, no, I think you were right. It was uh, 2011, we did the renovation and then the, and then yes. we with the trustees mm -hmm. in 2014. Yeah, 2011, we did the renovation. And the trustees took over in 2014. Now, when you first, oh, go ahead, Bob. Were you gonna say something? I was just gonna agree with you, Michelle, that it was 2011 that the thing that the thing got redone and then 2014 yeah. was the trustees, yeah. Yes. And when you first started, Elnora, was it, were folks growing in their own plots or was everybody gardening together? How was it? Well, everybody had staked out a plot when I went. And it was one plot left right up beside the fence. Uh, and that's what I took. Uh, we didn't have any designated place. We just uh, came in and whatever garden plot you like, you just took you just took over. And then we was planting tomatoes in the back where Syed is now. And we was just planting tomatoes back there. And uh, we were selling the tomatoes to the, um, our, our uh, what, what do you call the, those, pla what, a place in Cambridge, um, the organic um, place, they were buying tomatoes from us. And then when Syed- Oh, the co-op? Yeah, the co-op. Is co it the Harvest Co-op? That's really, the I never knew that. Yes. 
And uh, when Syed came, we gave him that whole section back there. So he took over that whole section. Nice. And what were you hauling water from home or somebody lived well, nearby? Well, uh, we, was, we was depending on rainwater or we was hauling water from home. If it was really, really dry, I would fill water jugs and put them in the back of my car and bring them down and water my plants by the root one by one. It took a lot of time, but that's how we had to do it. And then um, I got the idea of buying a trash can. I bought a trash can in a chain and a lock and I locked up my water. <laughs> when it would rain, I would, I put big holes in the trash can, uh, in the top and I turned it upside down. Uh, and that's how I collected water for my garden. Nice. Were you got were you gardening in in the in um, unremediated soil at that point, or what happened? With, what was with the soil? The soil was uh, was in bad shape. I used to go down to Milton, uh, in to the horse uh, farm and get manure mm -hmm. because we knew there were lead in the soil. Yeah. Um, there was a guy, his name was Bill Anderson, and he had actually um, been one of the first gardeners was there when the garden originally opened. And what he said they did was they just dug these big, huge, huge holes, and they just buried everything, the bricks and everything right into the holes. And then they just put topsoil on the top mm. and right. built a garden on that. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, he was an engineer and he said, you know, the soil hadn't been uh, taken care of or anything. We did some soil tests and found out it had a lot of lead. So they recommended we use a lot of manure. So I would go down every September and get bags. And I, I was working in Braintree. So I would come through Milton on my way home and pick up bags of cow manure or horse manure and just pile it up so I could put it in my garden. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that's how I we got around the lead. We would get uh, uh, manure, and Bill had a pickup truck, so he started going get manure. And I think the horse farm was glad to see us <laughs> hauling off all that manure. So right. that's how we uh, we dealt with that, and we we used blood meal, and you know different types of. Um, I think it was um, UMass who uh, recommended you know different um, fertilizers that we use. And so you mentioned, oh, sorry, go ahead. So that's how we got around all the lead and different things that was in the soil. Um, you mentioned tomatoes. What else was, were some of the main crops y'all were growing? Well, we grew, um, one of the main crops was wild callaloo. It was everywhere. <laughs> we used to, the guys used to take a machete and they would chop down uh, manure and they would put it in wheelbarrows and black bags. And we would just put a sign outside this free callaloo outside the gate and people would just come and take it. You know, so that's how we controlled the callaloo when we first came, when we came because we didn't have to plant it. It just grew. And it still somebody, mm -hmm, somebody had planted it there years before and it was wild and then, um, we were planting um, things like uh, collards and mustards and turnips and everything grew there and a lot of beans. Beans was one of the main crops that people grew. You know, a now, lot of was the, anyone, oh, sorry. Yeah, a lot of people was from um, Cape Verde and the islands and they grew tons of beans. Was anyone growing sweet potatoes or did that come later? Um, I started growing sweet potatoes down there when I first got down there. In the first couple of years, they didn't do too good. And then um, I put some in a bathtub. It was an old, uh, I don't know what it was, a half barrel or something down there. And I got a good crop. So uh, from then on, I was started growing sweet potatoes. But until um, the renovation, a lot of people didn't grow them. Cool. Other folks were, if you have questions, I don't want to monopolize. You want to know what it was like back at the beginning. Um, so it was a school and then did it, did it burn it was down? The or it was the Florence Nightingale Community School. 
and it was in operation until the late sixties and they closed the school. And then eventually they cleared the, the That's building, but, but the lot yeah. was just empty. Yeah, okay. and, um, and they turned it into a community garden. And just so everyone knows, the soil has since been dealt with. <laughs> that was a big problem. And uh, a lot of the has been cleaned. started in this way. So over the years, BNA and, and now the trustees have renovated a lot of the gardens and had to dig out all the old soil and put in drainage and put in new fill and new soil so that it's safe to grow in the ground. Yeah, that was uh, such a, a great feeling when they said they was... Um, uh, renovating the garden and, and uh, when Jeremy called me one day he said we're going to start renovating on Monday and I think every morning I would get up and make a big mug of coffee and uh, go down and watch for hours the guys <laughs> digging up the land and oh it was they called me a stalker I guess that was <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was a but big I, job it's a big garden so it was it a was. big project it was a big event yeah mm -hmm. yep but, El Elnor, how many of the people that 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 you started with um, I, I are started still there? Twelve. Still, uh huh. Twelve. Yeah. There was and how, twelve people in the garden, and I was the only one that spoke English. Is that right? Wow. Mm hmm. Yeah. And how many people are still there that were that started with you, or you were with at the beginning? Um. Uh, um. None of the original ones. Uh, okay. Um, None of the original ones. Uh, it was one guy that lived down the street. Um, so Francisco, he passed away. Right. Yes, he did. And, yeah. and uh, he, he was one of the last originals. And after that came Lisa and um, Ed Joel and those guys. Okay. Yeah. And David. David, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Okay. Nice. Well, I'm sure we'll hear more from you, but... Um, Bob, do you want, since you've been talking a little, do you want to talk about when you got started and what was going on then? Sure. I'm going to share my screen because I have, I'm kind of organizing around um, some pictures. <laughs> Great. So you can see this, right? Yes. Okay. So this is the map of, of Nightingale after the renovation. So this is the renovation that happened in 2011, which is when, when, when my wife and I heard about it. And um, you know she was going to the uh, to the fitness center at uh, 450 Washington, uh, the Women's Health Center there, and taking yoga or something. I don't remember what it was. And someone was buzzing about this new the new renovation and the new garden space was opening up just down the street, down Park Street there. So uh, she heard about it and told some other folks about it, um, and. Uh, and we got in and it was just it was just an amazing thing. And so you can see it's a little hard to tell from this map, but this is a this is the old school footprint. And it's a it's 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 really big. And there's a hundred and thirty five or six, seven um, plots there. Now, Grantley was the uh, who's here, but can't talk, um, sadly, or maybe he'll be able to pipe up a little bit. But he was um, in charge of. Uh, in some part of this um, this renovation, it's called Boston is Growing Gardens, I think, big. And um, some of us still have the T-shirt. And um, <laughs> and Grantley was, in, was kind of in charge of that through BNAN, I think. Um, and I didn't understand any of this at the time. I was just getting a garden space. But um, it, it seemed like magical to me. I just couldn't believe that this was going to happen. And I didn't grow up as a gardener at all. I... Um, <laughs> That same year, I took the mug class, so that was my really my first introduction to any of this. In some ways, did a little bit of gardening here at the house, but really just really a novice. And all these people who were going into this mug class who had been gardening for decades, and I just felt like it's so silly because I'm <laughs> going to come out of this after six sessions or eight sessions and be an urban a master gardener is ridiculous. And all the folks at Nightingale, I mean, people like El Noor, and she mentioned Etchell and David Wilson and. Um, uh, other folks. Well, Mr. Sebastian was there the first couple of years I was there. And then, of course, he did get sick and ultimately it sadly died. But he was there. And as you say, Elnora was just beans and beans and beans. But he actually had one of those was kind of doing beans. He was kind of doing a three sisters sort of thing, at least with, with some beans and, and corn. Yeah, I'm not sure I remember squash, but maybe some in there, too. 
But it was just, it was just great. It was just such a great feeling. And all these, uh, what I, people my age really, but I consider them elders because they really knew what they were doing. And it was so much fun to be there. Um, I've, t- I've taken a few photos of, um, of, of, of what Nightingale looks like. This is like at the beginning of the season, early on in the season from the, mm-hmm. from the gate, from Park Street. If you, if you see, look back in the back left corner there, that's actually Elnora with one with her big hat on. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and one of the great things in the, at, at Nightingale is this gazebo. It's it's in the middle and you, in, in the middle of this between C and E. It's uh, we have this really great gazebo and it's um, you know, it's not perfect for every event you want to have, but it's just a great thing to have, and we've just we've made a really good use of it. So. This is a, a, a view from one side of that um, kind of cross-shaped thing or, and um, just some more views of the garden, gazebo going different directions. Um, this is a little bit later in the season. Uh, and um, it's, it's just been a great kind of space. And um, uh, so one of the things that's been great to have, and this is gonna be a little bit random now, um, we have, we, we, we get to have kids come in and Elnora has arranged to have kids and come in sometimes to do various, various things. And um, this happens to be the daughter of a, of, of a co-gardener of mine who um, we discovered thanks to her, because I was sort of never, would never tried it. The rhubarb is actually kind of tasty when you eat it raw. Eat it raw. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 so we get, we gave Hannah a little rhubarb. Kids can learn about, about salamanders and, and, and worms and stuff. Um, we've had little kids come in and, and plant things or pick things. I think these kids are picking beans, actually. Um, actually, maybe these are, yeah, these are my beans, actually. This is, so at any rate, we, you know, it, they, they come in and learn, they've had a chance to plant some things, to learn about some of this um, coming through. Some of them are coming through on a regular basis. Elnora has, has done a great job of bringing people in at various times. Um, but it's really a nice thing to be able to do to have the kids involved in various ways in the garden. Um, a highlight, the gazebo has allowed us to have lots of great events and the events have been part of what's really been, really, really been a great thing at, at Nightingale, I think. Um, and this, uh, this is an event, I think maybe two years ago, obviously pre pandemic, I think. Um, and that's Reverend Mariama White Hammond, who's um, speaking there. I don't remember about what, this might have been an early Green New Deal thing we had. Um, yep, it was uh, it was the Green New Future Fest or something. I don't remember what we called it. Right. Um, okay. Maybe, right. But, right. Okay. But yeah, she was talking about gardening and Green New Deal, and yeah, that was yeah, yeah. It was it was great, and 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 you know the, the the events have just been really terrific, and um, uh, uh, a lot of people come, and a lot of people um. Uh, do various things and there's a food truck and one of our longtime gardeners there is enjoying some of the stuff from the food truck. And, uh, and we often, that's a, been a great thing to have, to be able to have them to bring a few more people in, frankly. I mean, people come because of food, right? And um, uh, uh, there's one of the longtime gardeners, David, looking very stern about me taking a photo of him or something. <laughs> yeah. And, um, <laughs> and, 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 and his good friend, Valerie, and another friend, Roberta, and this is my wife in front, and um, having a good time and another event. So there's just been a lot of them. This is one where Kim Janey, when she was still mayor, had um, appointed a Mariama uh, as the head of um, uh, environment department, right? Department of Environment, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, that happened at, at garden at the garden. So the garden's been a great, you know, this was a kind of the trustees, this wasn't our event really, it was the trustees event, but it's a great space to do it in. And um, and of course the city, trustees with the city, I guess. Um, it's really it's a fun event. My, these are my terrible photos, so I apologize for that. But, um, and this is another one where, uh, Mayor, this is the green, this is the dance thing, I think, right? I don't know. I don't remember. Oh, what I think was. this was, this is maybe Juneteenth. Juneteenth. Oh, this is Juneteenth, Juneteenth yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, anyway, a lot of great opportunities for, for things here. Um, I've become the garlic king. This is what I've, what I've learned to plant in my, um, in my decade plus. The garlic has been my, th- has become my thing. So I've, um, uh, I, I just do this and I really enjoy it. This is the, the plant before, this is the before and after, after I've covered it. Oh, it's going the wrong direction. Um, there's me with one of my, one of my yeah, halls. Yeah. One of my <laughs> halls. Oh, there's me with escape. I didn't know about garlic scapes before we did any of this, but now um, garlic scape pesto is all about 
early July. Um, uh, anyway, so I'm just showing off there. Another new thing, <laughs> learning, I, it's been fun to learn new, learn new foods. And, you know, we've mentioned Callaloo here, and I never heard about Callaloo, of course, before um, coming to Nightingale and, um, and having at some of the local restaurants as well. But um, we, um, uh, and I have a couple of photos of, related to that, but this is, um, I, I posted this because I didn't know what the, well, I knew what it was after I'd planted it, but people thought it was a, a sunflower or something like that. It's, it's related. Probably, I don't know if anybody here on the, in the thing knows what this plant is, but I'll show you what came out of it. Oh, the root. Yeah, those are Jerusalem artichokes, right? And um, so I never had, I, 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 may, I probably had them before, but I never knew about them. A great plant, a beautiful plant, a great, uh, just a wonderful um uh, a wonderful root to do things with, roasted them, made soup with them, lots of things. Really terrific. Um, this is uh, something that that not many places gardens get in New England. Um, not my plant, um, but um, I, I assume some of you can recognize what these are. These are figs. And mm -hmm. um, this tree really just, just there's two trees right next to each other and they just went to town. Um, uh, I don't know if Melissa's here today or not, but it's her plot. Um, and uh, we had to keep her coming, keep on calling her and saying, your figs are ready, your figs are ready. And um, <laughs> because uh, sometimes she'd miss a, miss a, a day or two. Um, but they were, when they started coming, they were just great. And she allowed me to take one of them and, uh, and uh, to taste it. And um, yeah, boy, it was so good. So that's what it looked like on the inside. Nothing quite like a fresh fig. Other random photos, fennel, no, oh, you know, okra. okra. I didn't like okra before, but you know, once you grow it and you start to understand it, it's so great. So um, I never grew potato, well, I, potatoes, been growing potatoes. Um, this is me in a joke with my daughter and uh, her girlfriend. <laughs> but uh, um, so here's some amaranth. This is the red amaranth, um, which is really common in our garden and apparently is what the, what the Haitians like. How's my time, Michelle? Am I okay? Yeah, you're fine. Go on. Okay. Um, uh, just give me a heads up. Um, so before what we saw, oh, I was I was in the Mesoamerican um, thing before, and she had a photo, a beautiful photo of the, all the amaranth. There's golden amaranth there that they're doing. And I have a photo of that here in someplace here too. But um, uh, that's amaranth, I guess, is a big is a big Central American and maybe South American grain. And of course, but it's also the... Uh, it's also the plant that gives us callaloo, the leaf. And so I learned from Etchell that the, that the Haitian people like this kind of callaloo, this kind of leaf better, the red ones maybe, than the green. Maybe not better, I don't know, but this is something that they have. So Etchell has this all over his garden. And, um, and uh, th these plants are so magnificent when they get big and they're, they're, they're as tall as um, sunflowers. And um, these flowers are just so gorgeous. Um, oh. Okay, that wasn't the golden one yet, but I, there's more. So one thing, these are a little random now. I, I've got, allowed myself to be an art shot person with um, vegetables. So you can argue with this art or not, but I, but I had to give a sense of scale on this one because this is a real big tomato, which I'm really happy with. Um, oh, I, I've, I've taken my love of gardening elsewhere. So we were in Cuba a couple of years ago. We went to this great garden in Cuba, um, uh, uh, an organic garden. Um, out in the uh, out in the west of west of Cuba, and uh, it, it just it was just a fabulous place. And I don't know, they're just a couple of pictures of gardens, but I, I did love that scarecrow. Um, and uh, so more art shots, more art shots. There's the golden amaranth, hooray! Yeah, it's so good. And and so you know, there's green and there's gold. There's other colors as well, but th these are the most common. Um, you know, fava beans. I, who, who knew from fava beans, but I grew some great fava beans for a couple of years and then I gave up because they really, aphids really like them. So I've kind of stopped. Sadly, I'm, it's unfortunate, but, and there's David with his flowers and he's, so he's one, one of the people that Elnora mentioned before, who's a, a longstanding gardener there. Um, along oh, with the the Yeah, yeah. Well, and D David's a big pl flower guy too. So, um, <laughs> uh, and uh, just other random things I got, that's me. Okay. Oh, so oh, the logo. <laughs> early on, I, early on, I said, let's make it, let's make a card, a membership <laughs> card for members. And um, a couple of people really loved these. And I, you know, uh, they were hard to kind of keep up. And um, especially with the pandemic, this kind of fallen by the wayside, but I made this little logo 
um, uh, it was really hard to find a hard to find a good photo. So I had to do it this way and kind of went with a crow sort of image and a, uh, but then I had to make it a nightingale. I wanted to make the connection with the, with Florence Nightingale. So I gave her a little, a little nurse's cap. Anyway, so that's, um, I'm hoping we'll, we'll put these on a t-shirt someday or something. So. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. I love those. Okay. So that's it. Learning about flowers. I assume most of you will know what flower this is. It's an okra flower, such a gorgeous flower. And uh, so this is just some of the fun I've had. And this is a space creature. I, you know, I, I'm not sure Ooh. what it is. It's a space creature <laughs> that would um, happened in my back porch before I got it planted. <laughs> and and then you know the, 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 the middle of the season, the end of the season, the garden, the garden looks like that. Yeah, it's just amazing. It's a little dangerous actually to walk through them sometimes because, but uh, yeah. So love oh the the weird weird veggies. So that's really that's the end of my photos. I think. Oh, I'm so oh. glad you brought photos to share. Whoa, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Um, so and it so it, it it just brings up all the things that I think have been meaningful to me about about Nightingale. I'm such a lousy photo photographer and I wish I could have, you know, pictures of people more because that it, it's really the kind of the people like, um, uh, well, like Grantley, for instance, Grantley was there for the first couple of years and has been on and off there for, for ever since he, he just, just dashed off and moved just this year. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, uh, but, but he, he, this photo is kind of an, an homage to him because I never knew people could grow, carrots so big this is like one of my first years there and one time Grantley came out of the backyard uh, the, the back of the his plot back in the back of the um garden with these massive carrots that were just um just you know just huge and um i i'd never seen anything like that before so uh anyway Grantley was an inspiration for many things and besides helping us get started so um anyway that's that's kind of what i have for this um um, it's just, it's a great, it's a great place to be now without its management and logistical problems, but it's a, a great place to be. Thank you so much, Bob. I want to just highlight in case anyone didn't see, I'm just going to read off what Grantley shared yeah, because he has laryngitis, gonna, but he, say, he did share. Um, so Grantley says, hello, everybody. Greetings from Houston. Can't talk to you to laryngitis, but didn't want to miss this. And then he, oh, sorry told us gave us a little history because he was there for all this renovation stuff that we've been talking about so 2011 renovation was a, a part of boston is growing gardens big the dorchester project i was the big project manager for roughly a year and the map that bob showed was the original map that grantley helped to design of the renovated garden his major task was to recruit 100 plus new gardeners into the 132 plots he also coordinated events to support gardeners, including basic garden education, yoga workshops, cooking demos, watercolor painting, live musical performances, and other events. As mentioned, gardeners were provided with a kit, including a big tote bag that consisted of t-shirt, seeds, water bottle, hand trowel, and cultivator. Uh, we also did a garden class with the daycare through Grace Church, which was across the street where CVS currently is. Um, and Grantley says, I nominate the garden to be named in honor of Elnora Thompson for all of her hard work, commitment, and dedication over the years. What a sweetie. That <laughs> is very sweet. <laughs> um, awesome. Grantley, feel free to chime, chime in. Absolutely. Grantley says, I strongly believe the garden would not be in the position it is today without Elnora's leadership and advocacy. And I, I think we can all agree that's totally true. And Elnora's become like a real leading or has been all along a real leading force and spirit, not just of this garden, but I would say of the community gardens in Boston, um, an advocate and a leader and, and always very generous with her time and wisdom. So thank you, Elmora. Um, Welcome. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> well, that's all right. <laughs> and then um, should we pass it over to you, Sharon? So we have until 3.30 and that includes Sarah's time. So we've got, you know, about maybe 10 minutes for each of you and then some more questions if folks have them or reflections if anyone in the group has any to share. But why don't you start, Sharon? Oh, you're muted. Yeah, you um, I dropped down some notes. So I'll, I'll try to be as 
orderly as possible. <laughs> so I can't remember um, the exact time I joined, but I remember Eleanor saying to me, because I met her outside of the garden first, and I'd always pass and see her there working in the garden, but I knew her through another friend of ours. And she would say, I want you to join. I want you to join. It's re we're going to get it renovated. We come and join now. We're going to get it renovated. And I was like, ah, I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. And finally, when it was renovated, she said, you're joining. <laughs> and so um, I joined. I was one of the first people to join when it was newly renovated. I think I was 10th or what? What? Fifth? Something like that. But I joined when it was newly renovated. And I had, I love gardening. I, I, I adore the soil. I adore the earth. And the people at um, Nightingale are some of the best people you can meet. They're very encouraging. They're very loving in terms of welcoming you in and making sure that you know what you need to know and helpful. Um, I was, um, I still consider myself a part of the composting team, although our compost, I haven't been there for the last two years consistently because of COVID, but hopefully this year will change things and I'll be back out consistently like I was before. But, um, we had good composting parties. We had good potluck. I remember the potluck parties that we have at the, um, with the soup, Eleanor will cook a big pot of soup. I'm kind of and set it on top of a grill, a fire grill outside in um, the um, the little uh -huh. shelter, and we will have all have potluck or bring a dish from something we made from the garden that we've grown. That's one of my most mem memories, my best memories. Um, I remember all the recruitment Ratley used to do when he would come in and he would say, "Bring a friend, you know, we're having this event, Sharon. We're having this event." come on, come on over and, and, and just encouraging people to join and encouraging people to be a part of the community. Um, for me, I think gardening is very important and it, it's therapeutic and it helps you to relax. And one of the things I started doing is I got a plot next to my, and I started bringing my class to the garden where they would garden. And we would shut the gate because it was a great idea pay for preschoolers and we would shut the gate and the kids would just run all over the garden and pick the berries and Eleanor would entertain them. So that in itself was a refreshing thing to see kids interested in fruits and vegetables and get them involved in the growing of, of gar um, their foods, with, knowing where their food come from. Um, the other thing that was impressive for me was the different nationalities and cultures that we have at Nightingale. Um, we have the whole world, the whole world. If you can think about a part in the world and ask some person, you might find some person from there. And there's enough plots that we can carry the whole world. So um, we, we have huge, a wide range of cultures and, and nationalities in Nightingale Garden. Um, and I think that that's something that I think is impressive and something that we, we need to maintain and make sure people look different People are from different places and we bring new things to, to the conversation every time we talk. Um, one of the things that I hope we continue to do is grow our, our, our garden with the different cultures and nationalities and the different kinds of people and, and just make sure those people are seen also and that those people know they're welcome and continue to know they're welcome. Um, my hope for Nightingale is that it's there for many, many, many years. And even if I'm not there, or even if Eleanor is not there, or Bob's not there, or Sarah's not there, or, you know, that Nightingale will exist to help other people in the neighborhood, grow vegetables, get healthy food, build friendships and community, and enjoy each other. That's, that's the most important part of having that kind of garden, is building community and being loving and helpful to each other. That's well said. Thank you so much, Sharon. <laughs> Bob says we love, love you. you. It's too, true. <laughs> and well, we have we have, you know, rightly been talking about Elmer as a driving force behind the garden. I definitely want to acknowledge that Sharon and Bob and um, a couple of other people who aren't with us. Um, 
I mean, just aren't on the call. Um, uh, <laughs> Charlene and Jordan have been, you know, Ross rather, have been like key uh, leaders and and just uh, Don't forget essential Charlene. pieces. Yeah. She said Charlene and Ross. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, have been a huge part of the garden too. And, and Rocky, who's not with us anymore, but was a fantastic um, just community member and an amazing grower in the garden. Um, so now should we pass it on? And, and I definitely want to come back to everyone. And I liked how you talked a little bit about your hopes for the future. And if other folks want to chime in on that at the end, that would be great. But before that, um, Sarah, would you like to speak Tell us a little bit about your history and what Night and Gill is to you. Yeah, so uh, I'm Sarah Riddle, and uh, this is Joseph and Tim and Aaron, my uh, growing gardeners. Um, we're the newbies in the garden. We've only been there seven years. So, um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to share my screen, and uh, I have some pictures to show. Okay, hold on, let me get it down here. Ooh. While Sarah's doing that, I wanna say these are not just garden assistants or co-gardeners who come and eat berries. I remember having, having two of you haul compost for quite a while to clear out a space oh, yeah. for an event recently. So well, that, there are that was, workers. Yeah, our, our Green New Deal event and they needed to bring in the food truck. So we got some shovels and moved a huge pile. So, so the riddles at the garden. Um, we moved to the um, west of Washington neighborhood seven years ago. Um, and we had lived on the other side of Cobman Square and I had struggled for years and years to try and grow food in my yard where the soil was terrible. And we had joined a community garden over there and it was like magic the the remediated soil did all the everything grew like it was supposed to so when we moved over here um we had previously worked with Elnora through community things in the boston project and i i said you know can we get in the garden and the only thing that was available was this little box and we grew so much food out of that little box for the first two years um and uh yeah my little gardeners were much smaller then uh and then we got a plot in the back and uh, spent a couple of years uh, growing there. And um, you'll see in the middle picture, right in the front, there's a little celery plant. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. So take, take note, but you know, tried a lot of different things. Um, and this was all just like, you know, growing things that we knew and trying some stuff because I don't know, garden is, gardening is awesome. And it's great therapy, um, but I wanted to share like two of my favorite memories in the garden. Um, one, you can see Aaron grew his own pumpkin for the first time. And I think if you see a face of a kid who's that excited about growing vegetables, um, that that's what gar makes gardening, you know, just so pleasurable. Like he, he grew it from a seed and actually someone had given him a pumpkin from her garden the year before. And we saved the seeds and he grew it from a saved seed. And, um, you named that pumpkin, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, he named the pumpkin and he took it to school. And the pumpkin got to go to second grade and sit with him all day. And his teacher sent me a picture of him with this pumpkin. So I think just, you know, the kids learning to grow things. It's really awesome. And then on the other side, you see, um, I did a neighborhood preschool for a couple of years. And um, like Sharon used to bring my kids to the garden because it was, you know, when you're talking about animals and how do plants grow, and uh, in the spring, when the yard's really muddy, the garden's a great place to go walking. And one day you'll see, if you look on the sidewalk, we found a snake and they sat on that bench for like 45 minutes and watched that snake and talked about that snake. And it was like the highlight of their life. And to have a place where um, I could bring them and teach them. And we found, of course, you know, centipedes and, and worms and all sorts of stuff that they got to interact with in the garden, which was really exciting. Um, and I think, how does gardening impact and benefit our life? Absolutely, the ability to grow our own fresh food, like number one, 
Uh, Bob, I loved all your food photos. I had to really restrain myself to just make one slide with some of our food photos. Um, but yeah, I've grown a whole bunch of new things and uh, learned how to cook them and eat them and uh, branched out into eating and using flowers. And um, I think last year during the pandemic, I took the mug class and that really like broadened my horizon on like a bunch of things that we could try this, um, which we started doing some new things last year. Um, and one other thing that I think is a huge benefit from gardening is the community. So this is the Green New Deal um, event that was last year. Um, I think that really what makes Nightingale stand out is the community of the gardeners. Um, I mentioned that celery plant earlier. When we were starting the garden, when we had the back plot, um, one of the gardeners brought over, or he was really impressed with Aaron and how he was working in the garden. He brought over the celery plant and said, here, plant this. So we stuck it in and it grew really great. And towards the end of the summer, he came back. He's like, what are you doing to your celery plant? And I said, nothing. He's like, why aren't you picking it? I'm like, it doesn't look like celery yet. And he burst out laughing. He's like, if, if you want it to look like that, you have to live in Florida. He's like, you can't buy, you can't grow celery that looks like it comes from the store. So he taught me I had to like shuck the celery and keep pulling it so it could keep growing. But that's the kind of knowledge that you learn when you grow in a community, right? Like there are people sharing plants and sharing tips and um, it, that's one of the most beautiful things for me. Um, another huge benefit for me of the garden, and this is a picture that's really important to me um, of the shelter. And uh, so two and a half years ago, my dad passed away really suddenly. And um, for me, a huge part of processing that grief and that experience happened in the garden because um, sitting here in this place, surrounded by all these beautiful plants that my neighbors have grown, um, it's, it's peaceful, it's grounding. And um, I would walk past the garden on my way to and from work and a lot of days after work when it was hard and I was dealing with all of the emotions of grief, I would sit and um, it just, it's been a huge, a really beautiful place of grounding and healing for me. So that's definitely a, <laughs> a benefit of the garden. Um, but the best part about gardening is I get to do it with these guys. So um, Joseph, Tim and Aaron garden with me and um, with varying amounts of enthusiasm, depending on the day. But uh, you can see in the middle next to Tim, one of the things we tried this year is I really wanted to try trellising and vertical gardening. And I had the idea, but but they designed and built these amazing trellises for me. So it's been really fun to do that together. Um, and uh, so that's my my new plot that I got two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and those are the trellises at the beginning of the season. But um, my hope for the future of Nightingale is that we all keep growing that we grow new things, that we grow new relationships. Um, I think that I was talking about community being very valuable, but one thing that's been lost, like as we have become more industrialized as a society is mm -hmm. the communal sharing of knowledge that happens in, um, in like a tribe or, or a town. And the Nightingale Garden is a tribe and the intergenerational sharing and knowledge um, is super valuable. It's been really cool for my kids to experience that. Um, you mentioned Rocky earlier. Um, he was always there and always talking to the boys and, and asking them how they were. And, you know, there was one day that he was just sitting in the gazebo and started talking to Joe and realized his name was Joseph and he gave him a whole sermon on what his name meant and like you know basically challenged him to be like you know you have this name are you going to live up to that but it's beautiful to have people of many generations and many cultures all sharing the land growing together but also growing each other and so I really hope that we continue to grow new relationships and new things in the space.
So, and that's what it looked like later in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop my share. Thank you so much, Sarah. That was really beautiful, especially hearing how the garden helped you through processing your grief and also seeing your amazing plot, which I remember noticing when I've been in the garden this past couple summers, those trellises are really top notch. Um, so nice work. <laughs> yeah, good but, job, guys. <laughs> um, I want to call, so we have a few more minutes, which is great. If anyone wants to ask any questions or any of the gardener presenters have anything um, they want to share. I have one thing to say. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I would say if something happened to me tomorrow and I never come back to Nightingale, I know there are people there like Bob and Sharon and Sarah, that garden would live on forever. And my biggest regret in this garden is that all of that, um, those uh, beautiful um, blueberry bushes and uh, fruit trees that we lost from the original garden that we don't have there anymore. I am trying so hard to get back the, the fruit orchard. So this year I had a um, uh, idea that we was going to take both the orchard and the, um, the blueberry uh, our garden and um, have the kids to grow pumpkins and squash for the shelf for the um, food pantry. And um, I thought that would be a good um, uh, program for uh, my youth program for the summer. We're going to do hay bales, try to find enough hay bales so we can um, uh, do um, uh, no-till garden. And then I was so surprised when I went on um, last night when I was looking through your emails and I saw um, that uh, at Spencer Street, they're going to do a no-till uh, garden um, presentation. So I'm going to sign up for that too. Oh, yeah. So just That's wanted just... to let all my gardeners know <laughs> that if I'm not there tomorrow, the next, they will be able to run that garden. All of these gardens, they, they you know, people come in there and if I'm not there or Bob or anybody else is not there, the gardeners take people around and they tell them about the garden. They know the history of the garden. So, and you know, and if we have non-speaking, um, non-English speaking people, somebody's always there to help out. So, you know, that, that garden is a real, it's, it's a real um, life force in Dorchester. So I want to acknowledge, I want to acknowledge one person in this. Um, Ross and Charlene are always there also too to help. But some person that always comes to mind that is always in the garden uh, is Valerie, who is, the, she likes flowers. She picks flowers. She's been there for a while. And Valerie, um, I can't remember her last name now, but Valerie walks around and show everybody each plot and tells everybody what she's in, in each plot. So, you know, we are, we are blessed to have people who know what they're talking about, who knows um, that, you know, and so Eleanor, you're right. There will be some person there that would carry on and proud to carry on. Mm -hmm. so, just acknowledging all the people who have been impactful and who has done good things. Rocky, Rocky's always been helpful and, and sharing, you know, David, Ash Hill. So yes, I, I, um, we're grateful. We're grateful for Nightingale in the community. Very yeah. great. And you just underscored, I think both of you that Yes, we identify the community so strongly with some of you who are here and some of the other people that you mentioned, but I do think there's a strong spirit in the garden itself and around the garden that will, you know, it'll be different when different people are there, but it will still be strong and beautiful. It's a, it's a really- I want to say, I, I, love, I love what Sarah had to say, but she misspoke about one thing and she's not the newest person there anymore by a long shot. We actually do have- <laughs> We actually do have some some new gardeners that are that are pretty active and, and very very capable, um, so I'm I'm excited by that. Uh, the, Elnora's little um, little scenario there terrifies me, but um, uh, um, <laughs> but but, um, but I do think we, we do have some really great um, folks at, at at Sarah's level of experience, but also some really some newer gardeners as well that um are are good people and are interested in in helping 
move things forward and keep things going. So anyway, it's really exciting. Well, if no one does any, if no one has anything else to say, I want to thank you, Grantly, for chiming in through the chat and, um, and just to draw everyone's attention, there are a few things in there, other, other free programs coming up. If you want to be on, get our newsletter, if you want plants from city natives, there's a bunch of links in the chat that you can check out. Um, and then everybody who registered will get uh, a link to all of the recordings and any slides and stuff from all from the whole weekend. So. Um, yeah, I know. I know. I can't believe you just up and moved to Texas, Grantly, but whatever. Good luck. We we all wish you well. <laughs> Come free back and visit. And I love Grantly. We miss you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you so, so much. Both. Yes. All right. Yeah, we'll talk about more, more orchard plants, Elmora, and care for the ones that we have. It can be challenging growing fruit in our climate. Um, anyway, we had some apple diseases last year we have to deal with. But anyway, um, <laughs> not to get too bogged down in details there, I just feel so grateful for all of you um, who have uh, contributed today and contributed to the garden so much over the years. It's a really special place, um, a, real, a real gem in the city. So thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks to everybody. Thank you guys for having me. <laughs>